Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hello, everybody. How are you? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I want to get this shirt off. It's too hot in here for the shirt tonight. Uh, so I'll just, I'll just uh, uh, go here with this uh, 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 stretched out uh, T-shirt. Okay. All right. You can, uh, if you're watching us, if you're listening to us, well, you don't have to even uh, deal with it. Okay. So that's all that matters. Anyway, hi. How are you? Uh, uh, let's see, you got me for the next uh, 25 minutes. Yeah, yeah, I don't have anything to say, and I don't have any guests to put on, so here I am. Uh, let me say that, uh, you know, I, I, this is my, this is kind of like the, uh, you remember you used to have a store on the corner, it was run by a family, you know, a little family operation. That's what this is, this is a little family operation. Uh, I'm the, uh, I'm everything, okay? I am a host of a show, not the only show, because we've got Damien, it is a great show before we go on. Sets the table very nicely for me. Uh, and then right after me, uh, as a great follow-up to this program, is the intersection with Jack Bishop. And then at 1 o'clock in the morning, a bunch of people I've never met before in my entire life, but they do a really fun show called Connections, which if you haven't listened to it, it comes out of Florida, and uh, they're a bunch of people just having a lot of fun together. And I like them. They're nice people, and their their show is a lot of fun to listen to. And you should give it a listen to, either on replay or uh, if you stay up until 1 o'clock in the morning on the East Coast of the United States, uh, you can hear them. Otherwise, hey, 10 o'clock isn't too late to start listening to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, Connections, but they're on. And then, of course, we've got the arena, which is our sports show once a week, which I wish were on every night. And then he could kind of get a following because it's a great little sports show, and he knows he knows his business. Okay. So anyway, so I got the you know I've got this little network, but I have to do everything. I post the shows so they get in the on demand and on iTunes, and uh, so they can be used for any one of a number of other purposes. And uh, when something breaks, I've got to fix it. And uh, yesterday, uh, I'll tell you, it was just uh, an absolute disaster of a day for stuff. You know, it seems, you know, I don't know about you, uh, if you ever realized it, but when things break, they all break at the same time. It's like there are days I just... I'm afraid to touch anything electronic because I know if I touch it, there's something in my body that's fucking them up. So at, uh, during, uh, while Jack's on, sometimes I like to just unwind and I go into what we call the guest room and I turn on uh, some show or something to watch that I've recorded and uh, just sit there and watch it for a couple of minutes. I, I mean, I listen to Jack's show too uh, for about a half hour. But I need I need some time to unwind, and uh, uh, all of a sudden last night, the sound is cutting in and out on the TV set, and I'm going, what the hell is wrong here? And then it's completely gone. I mean, it's screwed up, and and then I'm trying to figure, out, well, what the hell is it? So I bring in another. I have one of these little sound bars. So I had another sound bar in here, and I took that sound bar and hooked it in, and the sound was coming through. So then I hooked it back into the old sound bar, and this old sound bar was finally working again without breaking up, and then it started breaking up. So I then changed optical cords, and everything was fine. But in the middle of all of this, right, I get a call from Jack, and Jack's having trouble. Uh, we have a, let me explain to you, we have a, a system here where we have a thing called uh, um, what well, used to be log me in, but now it's uh, uh, um, what is it? Uh, uh, remote PC, it's called. And what happens is they can then come on, use the 
the uh, the uh, control, you know, use the come on to the server that I have here, place their program in the playlist, put their program in a folder, and then after the show's over, I can do things with it like post it and so on. But they need to get on there, and they also need to get on there like Damien to turn off the encoder uh, so that his program can go on. Well, last night, Damien had some problems getting on. I figured, ah, maybe that was just a little problem he was having that was indigenous to him, okay? Uh, and uh, then I get this call from Jack. I can't get on. So now I'm trying to see how I can get on, and I, and, and I use my Mac, and I try to get onto it, and it's fine. And he and we're trying to figure. So we're, you know, all of the, all of this stuff when it goes wrong is troubleshooting. You know, what you're trying to do is eliminate what what is is wrong, what isn't wrong, and find out exactly what is. And finally, I said, "Well, you're using a PC, right?" I said, "So let me try to get on with my PC." And sure enough, it wouldn't allow me to type in what we call a keyword, which allows them to get on. Uh, so now now it's going to be two o'clock in the morning. Okay, uh, and uh, I, I, uh, <laughs> I uh, hear from, you know, uh, I then get a hold of Remote PC through their chat, and they try to guide me through something, and they finally say, well, just write us a letter and tell us what's wrong. So, I don't know. I can't figure it out. So I go and I change the password to a very simple, like, five-letter password, and it seems I can then get on with the... With the uh, with the PC, I get up this morning, and uh, on all my machines is a little note. Uh, you have to update your remote PC. Oh well, thank you very much for telling me. I uh, I knew there was something wrong, and apparently there was something wrong. Boy, when I do that, you can you can see my uh, little roll there, can't you? I was just I was scratching my back because I got this horrible back itch here it's been going on for years dry skin anyway where are we so I uh, um, uh, I, I'm thinking to myself gee you know now did they correct this problem because I wrote them a letter and they found out about it or tons of people wrote them letters and found out about it but you know they may have well changed their program that they were using um, earlier, on, earlier on and just didn't tell anybody. Uh, and uh, anyway, the system now works. But getting everybody back up to speed uh, has taken up the better part of my day, whether it was getting Jack to get going on it and Damien was just having a few problems and we had to have him reboot his machine. But I think, is it working now? Let me look and see here. What do you know? Yes, it worked for for uh, for Damien. Thank you, Damien. Um, it seemed to work for Damien. He dumped his program in over there, and it's all ready to go. So, I mean, all, all I'm saying is that uh, uh, you know, this is uh, this is uh, uh, these are the kind of things I have to put up with. Okay. It's either one thing or another. It's either my TV set is breaking up on me, and then at the same time, uh, the uh, the system is breaking down, and I got to figure that one out. And you know, you know what happens when things go wrong. And I know you probably have exactly the same problem. Whenever something technical isn't working, like oh, I don't know, you can't get onto your Google account or something like that, the first one you blame is yourself. Oh, I must be doing something wrong. When the fact of the matter is that in most cases, it's not you, it's them. But you are so um, uh, absolutely in awe of this wonderful electronic gizmos that you have that it's got to be your fault. It's something you're not doing. I know Jack, because he doesn't consider himself he, well, he actually hates technology, okay? And I don't blame him. I'm getting to hate it, too. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, Jack always blames himself first. Oh, I did something wrong. And then I go to him, no, you didn't do anything wrong. There's something else here that's going wacko. But I always blame myself. I know you out there, when you have something go wrong with your computer, oh, it's got to be something I'm doing. And it's not something you're doing. Uh, and uh, But 
I just wish companies would uh, be a little more forthcoming. I mean, I like this PC remote or remote PC. It's a great program. If you if you need one, you need a way to get onto some other computer on a constant basis, like you're you're at work and you want to get onto your computer at home. Uh, it costs six ninety five for the first year, sixty nine ninety five for every year after that, and that's as cheap as you're going to find it anywhere in the business. Log me in, which we were using. The reason I went to this was trying to charge me all of a sudden three hundred and fifty dollars a year, and that was just that was a little too rich for my blood and for what we needed. And I found this company, and they're a good little company. I mean, the product is excellent. Uh, Damien even said it works smoother, it works faster than log me in works, and in many ways, for what we need it for, uh, it it doesn't have every bell and whistle that say uh, log me in has, but we don't need those bells and whistles, and it works faster and better and more transparently than a. But what they didn't do in this case is they may have changed the program and not told anybody till this morning. Or they may have changed the program and not felt they needed to tell anybody uh, or the way in which they did stuff. Uh, but it wasn't until this morning after people like me went, oh, it's my fault. It's got to be something I'm doing, right, uh, that uh, uh, all of a sudden I, it was them. You know, and there was a little note saying, just click here and download the, the whole version. But then you had to reboot and you had to do a bunch of things. But in any event, that's what I had to go through last night. And when I go through that, and now it's getting to be 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to go hit my head, put my head on the pillow, and do you think I'm going to be able to fall asleep? No. So then i got to take a Xanax, boom, to put me to sleep because I'm just so keyed up from all this stuff. And I got it all solved. You know, I figured I got it pretty much all solved. And uh, yet I was just, you know, so I had to take a pill to get to sleep. And then I woke up early. Then I, you know, so, you know, so you say to yourself, please, dear God, although I don't believe in a God, but dear God, please give me some good news. You know, and then you turn on the news and you're not going to find it there because everybody's mad at everybody else and, Everybody's being mean to everybody else, and it's uh, it's not fun. Okay, so all of a sudden I'm I'm searching around, and I should have been listening to Damien last night, but I was doing something else before his show went on that was occupying my time. I was probably trying to fix something, uh, but I uh, I went to. Uh, 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 But Damien mentioned this last night, I didn't hear it, but I was looking around the web. You know, we've been having this problem lately that Skype, which is owned by Microsoft, suddenly has decided that as of September 1st, they're going to change what they're doing and how they're doing it, okay? Uh, And that uh, they have a whole new program called Skype 8, and if you have Skype 7, uh, which is what we're using on this program, uh, it's no longer going to work after September 1st. And I've been working my ass off for the last week playing with the new version of Skype, trying to make it work with this show. And quite frankly, it would impact the visual quality of the show. It would impact the way in which we do a citizen panel. As an example, I'll just give you a brief little example. I don't want to bore you with this, so I'm going to give you an example so you understand it fully. What we do when we have, like last night, we had 10 people on at one time. Well, how do you, how do you do, uh, you know, how do you become a traffic cop for that many people? What we do is when somebody wants to talk, we tell them to raise their hand, and then I will recognize them. And so I need a visual picture of everybody that's, uh, 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 that's, that's, you know, there, that's uh, on the, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's, you know, on the show and, and be able to see them. So I see the hands raising. Well, the trouble with the new Skype 
is you can only have four people's picture on the screen at the same time. They, otherwise, they're in little bubbles at the top of the screen. Okay, well, I guess I have to watch the bubbles. But then when one of them wants to talk and they're not one of the four people that's there, you have to take that bubble and pull it down, I guess, over somebody who hasn't been saying much. So that means more work for me rather than sitting here and just having a fun little discussion with people and not having to worry that much about the quality of the video and what's happening. Uh, and they said on September 1st, that's it. It's uh, Microsoft being a, a dick. Uh, you're going to have to go to Skype 8. Okay, Skype, uh, what they call classic Skype, will no longer work. So I have been fretting over this because as the t clock is ticking down here now today, it's the ninth, you know, that gives me about 21 days to get up to speed and hope that everything is working right. And today I come across an item and I should have been listening to Damien. Damn me, I'm such an asshole for not li And I do listen to Damien's show, by the way. Yes, I'm listening, Damien. Don't, I, I listen to what you say about me and no, I'm just kidding. Um, I should have been listening to him. Skype, and, and this is amazing. Everybody, get ready to to take a, 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 a to have a quizzical look. Skype said basically, uh, we've been getting enough gripes about the new Skype eight that for the time being, we're going to maintain classic Skype. You know, for the, uh, and they didn't say, you know, for how long. This could be a year, could be three weeks, but they said they are not going to go to the, they're not going to turn off classic Skype. You still can, can continue to use it. And I'm hoping that's going to be their wisdom for quite a while until they fix the way, um, you know, uh, the new Skype works. Why they can't get it to, to work so you know I know that they want to put new tech in there they want to put in tech that the Skype that's on your mobile phone looks like the Skype that's on your desktop they you know and I understand that uh, but what they should have done is said let's also allow people to configure the screen in the same way they used to if they want to you know that's not a difficult thing to do you can change the engine okay you can change the operating system the way the system operates but you can maintain the same look or give people that option like a little thing i click do you want uh, the new uh, skype look or do you want the classic skype look and uh, i'm hoping maybe that's what they're trying to do now but the, apparently they got so many complaints that they finally put out a, uh, and it was just a small little uh, uh, blog message, or uh, uh, what was it, was it on Facebook? No, it was on Microsoft's uh, forum that said, uh, um, uh, urgent or immediately, I can't remember what it said, but basically, uh, we've been listening to you people, and uh, we're not going to, make it so that Skype Classic isn't workable on the first. So the show can still look the same for a while. And and that was my good news today. Now, it, it, isn't it amazing what makes a 78-year-old guy happy? You know? Um, so that was my that was my good news. And I was I was delighted with it. Especially after all the other crap that was going on. Um so anyway, uh, how's the weather out your way? Is it like it is here? I am so, uh, like the air conditioner here is barely working. I've got a 5,000 BTU air conditioner in this room. And on a decent day, it can cool the room down pretty well. Uh, the reason is that part of the reason the room gets so damn hot is because I've got all this equipment in it. I've got uh, one, two, three one two three four computers that's for starters one of which runs very hot uh and uh one two three four five uh screens 
uh, monitors. Uh, and um, uh, so this room can get very hot just when, uh, during the winter, I don't need to heat this room. Let me put it that way. It stays hot on its own. But uh, it, it, it has been just so continually hot here. And I believe me, I know if you're living in Texas, I, I'm an asshole for even complaining, you know. But, I mean, not, we are all, we're only 90 degrees. We aren't hitting 100 okay but the humidity and all of that and then yesterday see everything breaks on the same day our air conditioner broke it just pfft, that's it no more air conditioner so then i got to call the super and uh, before we got here there were also other air conditioners in the walls and out in the dining room there was a nice big air conditioner and i said I called him and I said, can you help me? And he came up and we, we moved that air conditioner into the window with the one that is kind of broken. It's not really broken, it's just intermittent. In fact, oh, what do you know? All my lights went out up there. Hold on a second. Let me see, I talk about this and look what happens, see? There we go, wow, there we go, okay. See, I talk about this and the lights decide to go out. <laughs> Anyway, so we, we put in the new air conditioner, and he said, uh, this one uh, is a little bigger than the other one. I said, what? Because they, it was a, they were LGs. They all looked the same to me. He said, no, this one's, this, yours is a 10,000 BTU. I went, oh, okay. He said, this one's 1250, 12,500. I said, is that, is that sufficiently more? He says, yeah, that's quite a bit more. So now, uh, with girlfriend who never likes to turn off the air conditioner, I'm freezing my ass off. Plus, I know the bill's going to go higher because that eats up more electricity, right? So I And I'm having a fight with her, okay, because I want the air conditioner. I want the air conditioner on um, um, energy saving, which she agrees with. The little yellow light says energy saving, but then she turns it down to 72 or 70. And that isn't how energy saving works. Energy saving works by using the thermostat within the, the, uh, the uh, air conditioner to turn it on and off, on and off, to keep it at a regulated temperature. So if you set it at 76, it starts working that way. It turns on, it turns off. And it, uh, for the most part, keeps the room at an even temperature. And also because it turns itself off, it's not using it as often. That's why it's energy saving. But when you turn it to 72 and it never turns off, it's the same as if you had the green light on and you weren't doing the energy saving. So I can't convince her of that. And she won't even talk about it. She, I come home, she, I said, let's talk about the air conditioner for a second. And right now, it, 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 it's, it's freezing in there, you know. She's got to get it down to, oh, turn it down to 73. I said, doesn't matter. You know, the only time uh, th that's going to work is if the room becomes less than 73, and it don't seem to be going that way too soon because it's been really hot at night. In fact, right now, what is the current, the current temperature? Let me just look. Uh, current temperature here in New York, I know in Texas you're all going to laugh at me and say, huh, you know. 83 degrees right now. It's 83 degrees. And who knows what the humidity is. But it's just, you know, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. But I can't convince her that, you know, that number one, we'll save more money if we just, um, it, you know, turn that temperature up to about 76. In fact, that's what they tell you to do. You know, they don't want, it, to begin with, no city wants you using your electricity that much. All right? Uh, it's just the way. You know, Skype is still saying, you want to install the new version? No, I don't want to install the new version. Fuck you. Anyway, where are we? So, um, I've just turned on the Skype, by the way, in case anybody wants to call. So, uh, you know, I, mean, I don't know, maybe somebody can call me up and, and tell me I'm all wrong and that she's all right, you know, and that she's been correct in her assumptions and I'm not correct in mine. But uh, I would uh, really like to, you know, I'd really like to know. Oops. 
uh, I would really like to know what you think. Am I right or am I wrong? Uh, and, but she won't listen to me. She, I don't want to talk about it, you know. And I'm try trying to tell her, look, I'm just trying to save you some money, dear. Just trying to save you some money. Okay, let me see here. We first caller of the evening, ladies and gentlemen, has arrived in the form of... Yep, Phil Meyer. Hi, Phil. Hey. Yeah. I, I noticed the uh, Skype go on, and... Uh, but I'm afraid that if I don't call in when the Skype goes on, yeah. it's I'm listening to your show in a delay. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when I'm listening to you on the no, YouTube when when you see the feed, light when you see the light go on, yeah, the little green light that means right. I'm you know I'm available. Uh, you know, yeah, I know because I know. It, it's, people don't maybe don't know this, but the show is delayed by something like no, in some places up to a minute. You yeah. know, not all at the same time. Oh, look, we're getting a lot of people in the very beginning here. There's yeah. Scott, and there's, uh, I know, Scott, it's it's 83 Hi. degrees here. How, how, how hot is it where you are, Scott? 88. 88. So I'm really a I'm pussy, checking. right? I'm really a pussy. Uh, how is it where you are, Jeff? It's a little cooler up in Connecticut, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a little cooler today, but... It has been brutal. I mean, this. Uh, I, you know what I'm sick of? It's not that I'm sick of the heat, which yesterday I went out to go work out, and it was like I felt like I was on a on a griddle while going down to the gym. So I didn't even go to the gym today. I didn't even want to deal with that. But the fact is that, that the thing that bothers me more than the heat, more than the humidity, is having to have the air conditioning on. Because air conditioning can just get so fucking annoying. I mean, I am so tired of this false, fake, cool air, you know? You know what used to bug me in the, uh, in the summers in New York was the bugs. Yeah. Th didn't you have a lot of, don't you have a lot of bugs or no, they don't fly yes. up that no, high? No, they don't want anything to do with New York anymore. It's not fun. <laughs> uh, yes, Scott, you have I your have hand bugs. up. Huh? Yeah. Did you say Scott? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I was going to tell you, you, you were talking about your 12,500 uh, 12, BTUs? Yeah. Guess how many BTUs I have in my house. Well, now, wait a minute. Now, do you have a central air conditioner? I have two of them. You have 50,000? Two, two central air conditioners. I don't know, up, up around 25,000 BTU or something? 96,000. 96,000 wow. BTU. <laughs> I'm going to Scott's house. And you got <laughs> and, and and you have two of them? Well, no, no, the combined That's the total. Combined. Oh, combined. One, one, one's uh one's uh 60 and the other one's uh 36. Now, tell you know me. what it is in Northern California right now? What? 92. And uh, uh all I have in this studio room is a fan. <laughs> <laughs> why don't, why don't you have an air conditioner in there? They don't allow window air conditioners in this building. The only one I can have is the one that goes onto the patio from the living room, uh, and that that they supply. I put an air conditioner in the master bedroom, yeah. and I had it there two days before I got a notice. Take it out, or you're gone. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I I think you could actually go somewhere and complain about that, you know. Because it's it, the deal. It, uh, it was uh, in my lease. Suppose you are an old person and you have a heart condition, which you do. I okay. Do. <laughs> and and you need the air conditioning because if it gets too hot, you might have a stroke. You, you might know? die. Uh, this is California. These people are all liberals. They'll just tell me move. No, I mean I mean <laughs> th there's something inherently wrong with that. I mean you would think where they would say don't uh, have an air conditioning it, hanging out your window would be in this eight-story building I'm in, you know? Yeah, well, they uh, they don't allow anything in the windows. Uh, so, it, and that was in the lease. So you can't put a political sign in there. You, you can't do anything. So in other words, you, you, you're in that room basically having to live with a swamp cooler. Uh, I wish it was a swamp cooler. It's just a fan. Why you? you know, but I did, did you get one of those? Uh, there it is. Portable air conditioners that has a vent that goes to the window. I tried that. They actually get hotter in the room than the air because uh, the the, the, the tube that returns the air, the hot air outside, yeah. is in the room and it's radiating heat. 
well, insulate it a little bit better and shove it out. No, I but don't you know, know something—he's got, yeah. got a point there because what it's doing is it's taking the air, the the humidity and the hot air that's in the in the room, and it's pumping it out the window. Right. Right. Okay. So if if that isn't insulated, it's going to mm-hmm. add heat to the room. That's and that's what it did. So I took that back, but uh, my friend Will showed me a swamp cooler. And uh, it was about three feet high, yeah. uh, 12 inches by 12 inches. He says you put uh, ice water or ice in it, and then uh, there's these other little cooling things that you put in it and turn it on, and it cools a 500-foot room. It's silent. It's comfortable. It adds humidity. Okay, but uh, there's one other problem, isn't there? What's that? You have to empty a tank. Uh, no, I think the tank empties on its own because uh, it uses the water, uh, and the water will evaporate. Yeah. Really? Oh, okay. so, yeah. So it's called an evaporative swamp cooler. Maybe I should get. And, maybe I should get that for the studio. Well, I, I'm going to get one. Uh, he, uh, he showed me. Uh, he sent me a link uh, when he bought it from uh, Amazon. Yeah. And uh, so I, I'm going to get one. I think that's the way let, to go. Let, let me ask you though, Scott. That's ninety six thousand BTU. It's eight tons, yeah. Eight t- eight tons of BTU. Okay. Right. What's your electric bill every month? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> it's uh, about four hundred. That's it. Mine's five hundred, and I don't I know, have it I, on I, all the that's time. Why I can't believe what 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 is yours normal in the winter time when you're uh, not running about, air conditioning? About two hundred some odd. Yeah, Plus all hard. the crap you got on. Well, all the I've got all, all the, the electronics. All the I've got you all the TVs. Look at the TV Delta, sets. huh? You got to look at the delta between winter and summer. So you you use a lot of electricity to power your uh, your stuff. Yeah, right? my stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, it's we not, we it, cook on on electricity. Yeah. You, oh, you use electric it, as compared to gas. Yeah. Really? Which is not the most efficient. Well, you know something. Yeah. It's I interesting. I have a I have a really good grill on the patio, and uh, so I use the gas. There more. I don't think I've ever used the oven, uh, yeah. the electric oven in this apartment. Uh, grill in the patio either at that place. Oh, I am. Uh, I'm grandfathered in because my thing said uh, gra- gas grills were allowed, oh, and okay. now no grills are allowed. But oh, I, okay. they can't unless if I move units. I'm I'm shit out of luck. No grills okay. allowed. Isn't that sexist? Oh, no grills allowed. I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I but, uh, but I. Uh, um, you know, maybe the sw- maybe the swamp cooler is the answer. Then you it's know. quiet, and it's comfortable, and it adds back a certain humidity that is comfortable. It doesn't dry well, the air. People say, well, "Why don't you get an eight thousand BTU?" And I'm thinking of doing that. Not this year. It's the years. It's too late in the year now. I'll do it next year. And I, I but uh, I can run this five thousand, and I can run the five thousand in the guest room at the same time, and not blow a fuse. But I'm wondering what happens when I get the eight thousand. My my uh, super doesn't seems to think it'll take the load, you know. But when I there used are, to when I used to have the uh, the the ten thousand on the same circuit as this stuff, and then I would go in and use the microwave. That's all she wrote, Charlie. Got to go down to the I, basement. I, you know. I I have uh, or had for my sanding equipment. These booster units that would uh, that would boost and control the amount of electricity uh, that they were drawing. So I that would I put it in between uh, the uh, circuit breakers and my machine, and I could dial what uh, what uh, I wanted, and uh, it would boost. But I, but I got circuit breakers in this apartment, and they weren't the thing that blows. What blows all of a sudden <coughs> is this circuit breaker in the basement. And let's say it's 10 o'clock at night and there's nobody to get a hold of to go down to you know, flip the circuit breaker. It's not like I can just go down there myself how, and go flip. How, how old is that circuit breaker? Uh, I would say that circuit breaker is about 90 years old. I would have, well, this, you know. is, this is what happens. These circuit breakers wear out. At my store, uh, I used to use the circuit breakers to flip on certain lights and so forth. And eventually they wore out and I had to replace them. You might make a deal with the super, give them a hundred bucks, let them, you know, uh, replace that circuit breaker with a new one, and I bet you it won't pop. 
I asked him about that yesterday. I said, do we need a new circuit breaker down there? He says, no. He says, it's just the way the building is. This is an old yeah, building. I know, I know. But the panel may be so old that they can't get a circuit breaker to fit that panel. Well, it could be. Because uh, I had to replace uh, you know, a panel. And, yeah, and do I say to the, uh, to, without a lease, do I say to the owners, uh, hey, go down and change that thing? Or even if I did have a lease, do I say go down and change that thing when they uh, won't even fix, fix the cracks in they, the floors in the lobby? They can't deny you any services while you're going through this uh, no, situation. No, that's not so the point. That's not the point. If I... It, it, this is not a service they would do for anybody. They're so fucking cheap these landlords yeah. they're not going to go put in they're not going to re they should redo all the electrical in this apartment house well for the yeah. uh, you can always use that ada thing which is i'm 78 uh i you know I, i'm having some health issues and i need the air conditioning what are your <laughs> health issues i have numb feet uh, go fuck oh that's yourself. good enough go fuck good enough go fuck they yourself. don't have to know what the what the health they issues don't want to hear about your pussy problems you know? <laughs> Uh, you know, well, you give it a shot. I mean, you know, sometimes they just would rather avoid another lawsuit. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, we just bought a system called DeLong. DeLong, yeah. DeLonghi. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and uh, we had one. I don't know, six or seven years ago, in a different house. It was yeah. great. And my son was in Brooklyn. Now, is this for air conditioning? It's for air conditioning. Oh, because yeah, I, oh, I, I used to have one of those DeLonghi uh, heaters. heaters. You know? Oh, yeah. me too. The oil-filled well, Yeah, heater. the ones that catch fire and people die. Yeah, those. No, they no, don't no, catch no. fire. No, these, those DeLonghis are very safe. Yeah. And you can attach it to the window. Yeah. So you can open the window uh, that, that much. And then you put this piece in it. And and a little tube goes from there to the uh, to the yeah. But he was saying the tube the tube gets hot. It's Jeff, do you have two tubes, one for in and one for out, or uh, it, it, you know, there's some of them that have two tubes, <clears throat> and there's some that just have one tube. Now the uh, one I saw has one tube, which is basically the tube that yes, you're right. It's bringing some hot air. Yeah, from, but that it air conditioned from outside, but it's air conditioning. And, right. and, you know, a big thing in New York or uh, Connecticut, it's it's real moist. That's that's our big problem here. It's, oh, even in, it's not, uh, but an air conditioner dries the air. I know. Well, yeah, so, it, so, it also dehumidifies, yeah. And I, for yeah. instance, yeah. when he took yeah. this, uh, when he took this thing out, okay, when he took this thing out, he, um, uh, it, uh, he put it down, and it was all of a sudden it started dripping because right. the, the, you know there's condensation. It's just full of, what, of uh, cold water. Well, it was just really. the water that it was, it was turning the you know it was dehumidifying as well, and it, it was condensation. It, of it hadn't expelled all the water. You know, yeah. The water tube is like just a little tube on the side of the thing. That's for hangs green. out yeah. the window. You know, that's why during the summer, you walk down the streets in New York City, you go all of a sudden. And there's not a cloud in the sky. Is it going to rain? You know, because you're, fe be <laughs> you're feeling is somebody's condensation coming down on you. Yeah, and yeah. that's your bath for the day. You know, maybe at your gym, huh? <laughs> maybe at your gym. Maybe at my gym, <laughs> exactly. You know, so. Uh, uh, okay. So yeah, it's 92 here. Uh, the fans keeping it comfortable. Then I was looking at these Dyson cooling fans yeah uh yeah uh, bladeless bladeless yeah and i'm hoping i'm i'm saying to myself if i could find out if they were noiseless that would be nice too they're pretty quiet well by the yeah. way i want to if rob's listening thank you rob i appreciate it he knows what i'm talking about uh, he, you know he, but I, I think if you could go uh negotiate up to like uh 74 degrees you got, or maybe even seventy-five. Well, uh, you know, all I'm saying is, to me, it's it's not uncomfortable at seventy-five, seventy-six. It is uncomfortable at seventy-two because I'm freezing my ass off. Do you know she had it so cold in there a couple of nights ago? I had to put a sweater on. You know, 
And outside, and I look at the temperature, and it says 85, and I'm going, what the fuck am I wearing a sweater for? I just feel <laughs> guilty about wearing a sweater. When I lived in Miami going to college, my mother would call me. She says, are you wearing a sweater? And did you brush your teeth? <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm 64. She still does that. Today. By the way, we could use some more callers, folks. They'll probably be calling tonight. We had, boy, we had a, we had a, a we had a, not only a full house, we had a royal flush last night. It was yeah. very crowded. Very so crowded. there's one there's one way to to solve your problem, Alex. Yes. Yeah, it's not exactly legal, but it's just us talking, right? Yeah, what you, you listen, could, just us talking. You, you could get somebody to adjust the thermostat. Oh, I don't have a thermostat. Well, he has uh, steam heat. I have steam heat. Oh, talk about the radiator. Have a radiator. Uh, you have an air conditioner. Right? Oh, 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 you mean adjust the thermostat so that Marjorie thinks it's seventy-two, but it's really seventy-six. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I That's oh. like clothing. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you got to I'm glad you just said just between us because tomorrow she's going to be listening to this show and going. Don't say it. <laughs> You're a fool. You know. nah, I don't think that's the way to go. Probably, probably oh, well, the here, way to here's go the part. Is, here's uh, the part that really got me. Yesterday, she comes home to begin with. I don't tell her that I've switched out the air conditioners. Also, part of the switching it out is that the old air conditioner had like this accordion pleating that comes out to mm -hmm. block the the area. Yeah. Well, after five years, that was getting pretty ratty. So we took what was in the living room with these things and what is the same size window which were clear plastic pieces that go in there so you can see out the window right and so i figure i'm not going to tell her anything i want to see how long it's going to take her mm -hmm. to be able to notice this so she comes home and uh, she's you know she, usually as she is when she gets home from work she's grouchy you know that's that's the time of day she beats me, yeah. and uh, uh, and Lucky and then you. she says to me, and by the way, I woke up last night. I was at sweating my ass off because you had turned off the air conditioner, and I'm just keeping my mouth shut, right? She says, "Why did you turn on?" I said, "I didn't turn off the air conditioner." She said, "You had to because it wasn't on." And I was sweating, and I had to turn it back on. I said, oh, good, good. She's still not noticing that anything's different in the bedroom. And, and by the way, the air conditioner is right next to her on her side of the bed. So, but she's not even noticing that the accordion pleating is gone. And now she's still berating me. Well, you did. You turned it off. I know you did. And finally, I had to tell her, well, you look over there, do you notice anything different? And she looks and goes, oh, oh, you put in that glass stuff. It's also another air conditioner. That's the one from the dining room because the one that you were complaining kept turning itself off last night was broken. Because that's what it was doing to me. And that, that's <coughs> why I called the super and had him come in and, and do that. And she, she thought that I had turned the air conditioning off. See? Mm. Again, it's always my fault. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, Jeff. Well, tomorrow night, I'm getting... I'm going to Rome. Oh, oh tomorrow night? And it's going to be 90 degrees there. Oh, boy. So oh, they're having die. a heat wave in Europe. I People know. are dying yeah. all over the place. Oh, wow. Well, uh, we're, we're gonna. How long? The gonna... only reason that w that we're going this time of year, yeah, is because the grandkids uh, are gone. Yeah. How and long? They're how... all off. How long are you gonna be gone for? For a, a week. A week. Oh, okay. Well, so we're gonna miss and you. And I figured out that uh, when you guys get on the phone here at ten o'clock Eastern, yeah. it's four a.m. Yeah, well, I guess we won't be hearing from you. You won't be hearing from me very often. <laughs> I don't know. Boy, well, but you're going to have to take up the slack next week, Ray, and be here every night yeah. because we're going to... Uh -uh. Jeff's okay. Gonna, Jeff's going to be uh, out uh, with the Italians, you know. That's right. 
Mafia? Who are you going out with? Yeah. Oh, drink of wine. Uh, Air Italia. Air Italia? Uh, you going uh, to Italy, huh? I'm going to Rome. To Rome. Oh, Roma. Oh. Roma. All right. So, hey, that's Ray's stopping ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been there. I've only been to Italy three times. Yeah, Renati is an Italian name, isn't it? Yeah, my yeah, I'm from Italy. Although I did that Ancestry.com thing, and I'm half Irish and English. Oh, really? I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be, well, I could be all Italian, but in the north there, the G, the DNA kind of goes to, up down into northern Italy for some reason. Yeah. Well, I uh, I uh, I got my mind back from Ancestry DNA, and uh, I'm 99 percent uh, Jewish. Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's cool. Hey, uh... You know, right. now when you abduct some young girl, uh, we'll be able to find you with all these DNA samples. Yeah. You know, uh, it's, I think it's pretty good. You have that to look forward to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I keep getting these things from Ancestry DNA saying we have matches to you. Yeah, yeah. Mm. What, is it like a dating service now? No. <laughs> uh, date your sister? You can, d you can date your fourth or fifth cousin. Yeah. Well, yeah. my. Uh, uh, it, I, should I tell the story? My ex-wife. Do, do they do they want money for the matches? My, no, I, they, my you pay to find out all about my it. My ex-wife yeah. had a kid when she was a teenager, actually, uh -huh. and she gave it up. Yeah. And she just got a note from somebody saying, "Hey, I'm your son. I found you on Ancestry DNA." Oh, Jesus. Wow. And That's she so. decided, I think she just, I, I should ask her about that next time I talk to her. But I think she decided not to see him. Wow. Um, that after God. all these years, why, mm. you know. I mean, um, I had that, that quandary myself once about that I had a kid when I was 19 and she gave it up. And I wondered whether I should go looking for the kid. And at one point, I was going to hire a detective and have him go look because in those days when they did adoption, when they did this kind of thing, it, it, they, they disappeared into this abyss, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, uh, uh, so, and there was no way to really find them. There's no paper trail. But a good detective might be able to do it. And then I decided not to because I came up with the idea that if the kid wants to see me, that's one thing. Why should I suddenly come knocking on some kid's door and say, Daddy's home, you know, yeah. uh, that maybe all his life he wasn't told that, or maybe all his life he got used to the fact that Daddy wasn't home. Uh, yeah. And, and you know, so, I, so I decided not to, you know. I don't know. If there was a kid out there and needed that closure to see me, uh, I think I would, I would give them that. Yeah, know? if the uh, kid came to me, but me going to the kid. Well, did the kid go to your ex-wife? Uh, yes, I think so. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's her decision to make on that. Yeah. You know, I if uh, you know if the kid uh, today came to me. Yeah. If he's still alive, I mean, hell, the kid's probably seventy. My age. Huh. <laughs> It, it, My oh, age. older. Yeah. The kid. Older. The, the kid would be. Well, the kid would well, be. You were nineteen. Uh, oh, my, well, a couple of years old. Sixty years. The kid 60, would yeah, be. The kid yeah. would be sixty. Was uh, sixty-one. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, and uh, if he came knocking on my door, and I strongly, why do why do all of a sudden the TV the numbers are going down like crazy? Are we is a bad signal going out there or something tonight? It doesn't. And like nobody that. likes adoption. Uh, but uh, if there was a knock on my door and all of a sudden it was, as I suspect, Howard Stern, uh, <laughs> you know, I'd, uh, uh, I, I just don't want that shock, you know, so. Well, you know, I don't think that that's the way they should do it. They should maybe write a letter or uh, have somebody contact you and say, hey, you know, would you be open to... This I know, but they just send you this thing saying this person is a D is a, an almost positive DNA match for you, hmm. right? So, uh, what type of uh, match was it? Was it a, a, a cousin or an uncle? Oh, I know, I've gotten a couple of them. One that looks like it's like a third cousin or something. I haven't, but I have no idea really to tell you the truth. Yeah. I mean, um, I can't tell you what the uh, you know uh, what the story is, but 
I'm wondering if this is a good thing for them to do. You know, I mean, oh, to give you the matches, yeah, without I, without asking, without asking, yeah. I never asked for these. Yeah. I just suddenly I get a thing from Ancestry DNA, and they say, uh, "Hey, this woman is your distant cousin or something." I said, "How distant? I mean, can I fuck her?" You know, uh, can you opt out of these notifications? That I do, I guess I can. I think you can. Yeah, but, but I'm looking at mine right here. I have a a list of about 54th cousins really yeah and yeah. they're also your sister oh, oh, wait a minute let me let me let me let me, <laughs> let me see here ancestry sixth DNA. cousin fourth cousin wow ancestry yeah i i never did the uh, uh the dna thing uh okay. although i did look at ancestry.com and it's got my grandfather's census uh, my father's birth, uh, death, and marriage, yeah. my siblings, uh, not siblings, yeah, siblings and uh, my uh, kids. Well, let me see here. Here it says here, uh, subscribe to our access, our full collection of records. They like try to upsell you on this deal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but they said that I am 98% uh, European Jewish. Wow. 1% Africa North. That's oh. Moroc Moroccan or yeah, something yeah. like that or Algerian. 1% uh, Caucasus? Caucas Let's see That's here. It. But Jeez. wait a minute. Where is it? Where's my, uh, where's my, uh, uh, where am I? I don't, it, it doesn't have a list of, oh, here we go. Here are the uh, people. You have no recent hints in your tree. What is this? I have one letter, a message to his team. Uh, but wh where, where are all those people they sent me stuff about? Trees? No, I don't think so. Uh, home? DNA? Um, DNA story? DNA matches. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, D. Rappaport, 78. That is my cousin, David Rappaport. Mm -hmm. uh, first, second cousin. So it's extremely high. So I got that one. I probably should write him. I wonder what happened to him. He was a stand-up comic. Um, Ty Akita. Does that sound Ooh. like somebody who would be related to me? <laughs> Maybe it's one of those uh, hookers that are sending friend requests. Confidence, extremely high as a second cousin. Gail Reiter, uh, possible range, second or third cousins, extremely high, it says. Stacy Dewey's, extremely high, second or third cousin. Another second or third cousin, uh, extremely high, is Char Charles Stu. I guess these are just nicknames or whatever. Hey, uh, what's that one on the screen I see? Uh, Ted Kaczynski? Yeah, Ted Kaczynski. <laughs> then we get down to third cousins. There's a good-looking third cousin here named Marina Maraskeen. Uh She's a third or fourth cousin. How high can you, in the cousin range, how high do you have to go before you can start fucking? Well, I think third, it's the second. You're se yeah, second. You're, it's, you're, it depends what you state you're in. Yeah. Because Eleanor Roosevelt, you know, was a fifth cousin to Franklin. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. That's fine. Uh, well, there's some cultures that still marry their first cousins. There's some states where people marry the second cousins. And the whole, and the whole, the whole, some states they marry their sisters. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> like Arkansas. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey. Uh, but uh, here, a whole bunch of Third names. Third cousin, you're safe. No. Yeah. You know, if they say extremely high, so I I don't know I don't know what my uh, what my story is, but I do know they were right on David Rappaport. He's the number one. He's the first cousin, and he definitely is. I I, I should well, I should actually if these I, are extremely high, maybe they're just smoking dope. Maybe I should write them. <laughs> maybe I should write. Yeah. Them. I, I wrote some of mine that um, were close, and we we talked on the phone a couple of times. It was kind of cool. Yeah, and what did you find out? Uh, we we talked about relatives that had both abused us when we were children, uh, <laughs> shit like that. Oh really? <laughs> oh that. Oh. Uh, it was kind of fun. Yeah, I'm a 38 percent Northern Italy, 29 percent Great Britain, and 21 percent Ireland, Scotland, Wales. Really? And do, and do you yeah, know and which 
relatives uh, gave you those? Yeah, uh, so my dad is half, his mother was from Great Britain, but that should only account for 25% because his father was from Italy. So I think his father. Wait a minute, your egg's all, done. I think his father was also from, even though they migrated to Italy, were, was, were from the British Isles because they have blue, uh, blue eyes, red hair, fair skin in the middle of the of the mountains near Genoa, so, and I've been there. <laughs> so I, I think that uh, that's where the rest of it comes from. Oh, okay. yeah. Now you don't get any. For instance, my, my great grandparents time. were coming over from Russia, mm-hmm. and uh, my grandmother was born in England on the way over. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make her English. You know, uh, not, not her DNA, no. Not her DNA, yeah. yeah. But you can get the records though of her birth, yeah. and uh, and you and they give you the ship records, and it's pretty cool. Yeah. Hmm. Like I see, I see um, when my when my grandmother's family came in to uh, Ellis Island, and then when we went to Ellis Island, in the little tour, they said, "Olari, you are next in line, Olari," and that was my grandmother's uh, name, my hmm. grandmother's father's hmm. name. They it's it's funny. I went to. I, you can go on the Ellis Island site, and I actually found the page where my mother and my father are listed. There you go. Uh, as having gone through Ellis Island. Um, yeah. um, Scott, did you ever try any of these ancestry DNA things? No. Uh, the the cops don't need to know where I'm at. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, you know the other thing you can do with this is you can download, and I did it. You can download your whole genome. And it'll tell you, uh, if you send it to certain websites, it'll tell you your chance of getting certain diseases. Hmm. Now, how, do you, never, how, do they, how do they get the DNA? Uh, through saliva. You spit into this thing a whole bunch of times, and then you send it to them. I had to huh. spit a twice. They, they sent me another tube because my first spit wasn't good. Uh, I guess it still had some of my dinner or something. Well, oh, you know, <laughs> I did have some DNA work done because uh, uh, my first wife... Uh, uh, she had a miscarriage and so we wanted to make sure there wasn't a problem so uh, the next time she was carrying uh, they took some ambiotic fluid and they also took something from me I don't know what it was uh, so that they could see if there was any uh, I think it was your fucking brain brain (laughs) well you know they wanted to make sure that we didn't have uh, some sort of uh, genetic issues oh I'm sure you do I'm sure you do. I have no yeah. doubt about your ge- genetic <laughs> issues. With that hat? Yeah. Ooh, proof. Yeah. yeah, proof positive. Um, so anyway, uh, a couple of things we haven't talked about in the last couple of nights, and one of which I thought might, uh, might be interesting to um, pursue. Uh, the change in the Oscars. Oh, that is so ridiculous. What, you mean February? Well, February twenty uh, eighth, but not this year, next year. Yeah, they they want uh, more viewership. A year from now, what? Well, you know, a fuck viewership. This is the Academy Awards. This is something that's been a tradition in this country since what nineteen twenty seven. Uh, and I voted in those, by the way, and my my uh, Janet Gaynor won, and I I voted for her. But anyway. Um, do you know what the first movie was to win Academy Award? Uh, Birth of Nation? No. No, no. no the, the Charlie Chaplin movie. Nope. Uh. Wings. Uh. Wings. Wings. That. Yep. I forgot it, but I knew it. Yeah. Barbecued or fried? That's why they made a big deal out of the fact that the artist, Hello. when it won for Best Picture, the artist, you remember that a few years ago? Yeah, was the, was the first. It was the second picture in history, silent movie to win an Academy Award. Uh. Because the first one had been Wings, and then after that, sound came in. Because they did it in 27, and I don't think they had another Academy Award for two years. Um, But anyway, uh, all of a sudden, they've decided they're going to add a category. And the category is... Achievement in a in popular film. Yeah. Now, how do you define popular film? 
Well, they want to make sure that Black Black Panther can win an award. That's what it's about. But number one, I mean, okay, that was a popular film, but how do you decide which popular films? You know, they there were several popular films this year because Uh, they want they want the they want the uh, all the Marvel films and sci-fi films and all those to be able to win awards, and they never do. And in this case, in particular, it's because of Black Panther, and there's a lot of political pressure for that. Because it wouldn't okay, have won Best but, Picture, but, so you now know, it's going to win when you talk about, most popular about, film. About that these films don't get nominated. Star Wars was nominated for Best Picture. Uh, yeah, Avatar right. was nominated for Best Picture. Uh, let me see here. I think maybe Raiders of the Lost Ark was uh, nominated for Best Picture, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. So it's not like popular pictures don't get nominated, and they certainly pick up a lot of the artistic awards which, like, they're no longer going to, they're going to do away with a lot of the categories that they're going to announce on the Academy Awards. You know what they're going, how they're going to give them away? During the commercial breaks. <laughs> so, you know, like, best, best costumes is going to be during a commercial break. And then at the end of the show, they're going to do a montage of all the people who'd won the other awards. It's disgusting. And well, they want to, they want to, uh, they want to bring it in at under three hours. Well, I've got a suggestion to begin with. One less uh, uh, film category might help. <laughs> uh, that would do away with at least five minutes, and especially if it's a really big film, you're not going to get all the, those people on stage at the same time. And why don't you do away with those stupid musical numbers that you do for best song to begin with? None of those songs, most people don't know what most of those songs are anyway. Why don't they do away with the political rants? That, that, That'll cut they, it. They've had years where there are no political rants, Phil. That doesn't do it. That's not what no. does it. Uh, That's not what's... Ex- yeah, people do it within their time, usually. They're going to do it anyway, you know, if they I, want to. So. But I think the popular film thing is just cheapening the whole the whole thing. I mean, you're supposed to be giving an award for the best film artistically or whatever. And now, so what's the best film? The best popular film or best picture now? What well, is? No, well, no, well it, 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 it's it, well, the best picture is going to, but suppose. Yeah, but. <laughs> then can Black Panther also be up for best picture? I, I don't know. I, I, I you just see, think they're I trying mean, to make sure that Black Panther wins something. That's what I think. I but. think the reason why Academy Award, the Academy Awards are getting less of an audience is because there's a certain archaic value to the Academy Awards. They're still the most watched of all the award shows, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're the, still the most respected of all the award shows. But I think the reason the viewership has gone down is because I think there's a younger audience out there that does not consider them significant. And, you know, suddenly deciding you're going to have best popular picture is going to have all the young people in America go, oh, I got to watch that. You know, what is it going to become? The MTV Movie Awards? You know, give yeah. it a big, give it, forget the Oscar, give it a big bucket of popcorn, you know? Yeah. I mean, yes, there have been newer categories. Uh, the, can you name a new category? I can. Um... The uh, CGI stuff? I don't know. No. Animation? Best, no. Be, best animated feature. Yeah. It used to be just best animated sh- cartoon, short. Best yeah, animation. My category, my category wouldn't work. What, Extra be, crispy. Uh, no. No. <laughs> but, uh, what is that? A chicken. Oh. <laughs> no, but you, you get what I'm saying here is that, that, you know, we have had new awards. But they've been needed because all of a sudden there were a lot more. I mean, there were a lot more animated uh, features. And so it, it became a very important category on its own because maybe the output of Hollywood, uh, 10% of the movies are animated. You know, it kind of degrades the, uh, these uh, guys that you don't see 
you know, that win for best costume or this kind of stuff yeah. because they're they're behind the scenes, and uh, it's unfortunate that they're not getting. Uh, you know that they're getting relegated to the, uh, to well, the coat if closet. Well, if they were insignificant in the public's mind, they're going to be even more insignificant by not getting an award at the Academy Awards. Yeah, yeah but you, yeah, well, if if they were getting it, they would be more significant. You know, they would be at least yeah. be I'll made you, aware. I'll tell you, an award show that has as many awards as the Academy Awards has, that is in and out in two hours, are the BAFTAs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, of the BAFTAs in England, two hours in and out. Nobody gets hurt, you know. Uh, yeah. and, and all they do is they just deal with the awards. They don't have big showy numbers of the song of the year with a song you never heard before in your life and don't want to ever hear again. You know. Yeah. Uh-uh. Well, the performing arts in England are more uh, seen as a job. Uh, and these people are getting awarded for their job. Here, here. You know, they have their they have their monarchy over there that are the stars. Yeah. We have our movie stars. And I'll tell and, you, I'll tell you, uh, the BAFTAs. You would think that all the BAFTA awards were nothing but British pictures, but they're not. They also include American pictures. They include any picture that was released in Britain. Uh, and yeah. so you have a very nice mixture. But also, some of the British films, which you never heard of, do make the cut. You know. And uh, uh, it's 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 fun to watch, you know. But I I just think that it's, you know, ridiculous. How do you watch the BAFTAs? I've never watched them. Is that lightning? Do you have a window in back of you, uh, yes. Scott? And is that lightning we're seeing? Yeah. If, if I get knocked off the air, it's because the we lost power. Yeah. R- really. It's a big storm going on right Cause now. Because I was what? looking in back of them, there was this like flashing, and I thought, uh, you know, now. Yeah. Why wouldn't you have solar when you have 96,000 BTUs uh, going nine months of the year, uh, have solar and a backup battery? The, so because that, with the 96,000 BTU, uh, uh, that uh, solar power will last about five minutes. Well, no, they, they build up. You know, they, you can have a battery. Four panels. It, I, I, I thought about solar, but my wife wants to move anyway, so it for for the last couple of years and and it'd be pointless but uh yeah. but i don't want to move so i'm just gotta keep my voice down <laughs> where are you scott he's in, in pussy what? whip texas uh, <laughs> pussy whip texas, pussy whip, texas. <laughs> well, right. did, did you used to live in iowa well i grew up in iowa oh okay i came to texas when i was 21. Yeah. oh you got pussy whip God puts a whip. Uh oh. Be Uh-oh. careful. Get get him in trouble. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to get him in trouble. Don't want to get him in trouble. <laughs> Boy, we have a low watching of viewing audience tonight. Is there something on tonight that I don't know about that's it's I don't think so. It's preseason football, but nobody watches that shit. Well, uh, well, uh, Rob's a big fan, so he's probably no, watching not- uh, he's baseball. He, oh, he's baseball. Oh, yeah. see, yeah. I don't know the difference between football and baseball. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> one you kick, they one you throw. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's no difference between baseball and football. God, I keep <laughs> thinking. I keep thinking during the Whoa. day. Keep thinking during. Oh, I, okay. I know what I wanted to talk about. And I, now I remember. You see, I think about all these things I want to talk about, and really, at my age, I should write them down before I go on. Or when I think about them. And Wait a minute! You just arguing with girlfriend about that the other day, and yeah, and you like were so pissed at her for saying that. Yeah. Well, and now you're saying you're going to do so it. That, no, that was a checklist. No, a checklist. That, that was a checklist. Oh, checklist. oh I'm sorry. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> no, because then, then I, when I get so off the when I get off the air here, and I'm a little, a little tired tonight for some reason, but when I get off the air here, uh, I guess one of the reasons I'm tired is it's a little warm. Um, once I do that, I uh, 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 now I forgot what I was going to say. I should have written it down. You have to upload everything. You have to upload anyway, everything. Anyway, here's what I wanted to bring up. <laughs> Today, the Trump administration offered up one of the most idiotic ideas I've ever heard coming Spons- out of huh? Force. the Space Force. Right. 
Now, now, to begin with, the let most me, powerful space. What is the space the force going to do exactly? I'm hoping that it has cybersecurity as part of it. No, that's not. No, that's not space force. It has nothing to do with space force. Well, it goes. You know. No, it's out no, there. no, no. It has nothing to do with cybersecurity, and that's. Being, I'm hoping that that's no, part no, but of it's not going to be part of it because it doesn't come under space. <laughs> Phil, well, you, you're wrong. Yeah. Just admit it. Wrong. Let's move yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. The idea of a space force disgusts me. And the reason everything that this administration brings no, up disgusts you. No, it disgusts you. me because you'd think Future. there was one place we could go without making war. You know? Uh, and we signed, believe it or not, a treaty a few years ago with the Russians and a lot of other people, that space would not be used to create munitions or... Um, uh, to How do you know that that's what the Space Force is going to create? Well, what is the Space Force going to do? Police space? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you I know, mean, uh, a good good offense is a good defense, you know? I mean, uh, that's on. what Trump it, it feel, just, uh, feels is uh, uh, strength uh, through... Uh, no, but... but well, 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 leadership what, we're, through what we're thinking about with the Space Force is a very kind of aggressive position on it. No, that's, uh, that's your interpretation. Well, I listened to Pence today. It's no interpretation. It's what okay, he was so saying. Okay, so what did Pence say? Pence basically was Pence saying they want to have a space force like they have the Air Force, like they have the Army, like they have the Navy and all of that who will do their, their thing for space. And I'm thinking, hey, good. We're going to wage war in space now. No, that's an assumption. Yeah, and it's my yeah. assumption that, that Trump's a prick. Okay? Yeah. Uh... Hey, uh, you know, I understand that you're, you're out in space there, but I just read that the U.S. Court of Appeals upheld the California bullet stamping law, which means that every time you fire a bullet, there's a, uh, it puts an um, uh, information yeah. into it Good. that can I mean, be traced. I'm glad you sidetracked this. Yeah, well, you, I, you, you couldn't you wait. Know, you're you talking about something You couldn't that wait no till validity. this got no, boring to bring that up? Yeah. You know, I mean, what's what's the space force? You're saying it's negative, and I don't see anything. I just, negative I about just think, a... I think space should only have in its in its viewfinder uh, a, a bright and rosy, positive future without any idea of a a, a weaponized force associated with it. Okay, now the Chinese it. want to weaponize the moon. So that they can shoot back no, this way. No, they, now, don't that? you think well, it's a good wait, idea wait, where, that there's some you, sort of counter? Where did, where did you hear why that? Why would they want to do that? That's why, why would the Americans want to uh, weaponize space? Gee, All they want to gee, do is uh, make uh, sure wait a minute. Uh, let that me, they have Let me get presence. this straight. They can shoot down at us, right? Is that what you're uh, saying? Yeah. By weaponizing the moon? Well, why can't we shoot up at them? There's no reason to if you have a, a, a something that neutralizes the forces. Oh, oh, and that's going to be a space force. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, Wouldn't God. it be? More, you know, I more mean, money our to Army and yeah, Navy yes, don't necessarily yes. go out and try to, uh, to to make war. Yes, Ray. Well, remember when uh, Reagan talked about Star Wars? I mean, yeah. he wanted to do this a long mm -hmm. time ago. And I'm not saying I'm for it. But one thing that really surprised me is that Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, the genius scientist, thinks it's not altogether a crazy idea, is what he said. It also bankrupt the Soviets. When uh, they thought that there was a Star Wars, they pushed and pushed uh, along with the Afghani war. But uh, Star Wars, I think, uh, uh, led to the demise of the Soviet Union. No, it did Yeah, but we're friends with that's Russia not now, the, so. That's not the not, reason. Uh, that's not well, the Trump reason why the no, Soviet I'm Union... I'm friends with them. You, you know, you guys not. <laughs> <laughs> so Steven Seagal. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just found, I didn't realize he became a Russian citizen. Really? What? Yeah, I, I mean that's really Louisiana going a lo that's really going a long way when you feel your audience doesn't want you anymore. <laughs> you Is know? that where he went? Yes. Yeah. I just I, I was watching a Steven Seagal movie. He's just been made the show. he's just been made I've never uh, he's seen. just been made a ambassador by Putin uh, to create a better relationship between the United States and Russia. Oh, Steven Seagal wow. is gonna do that? 
Wow. We should we should have we should have Sylvester Stallone do it on this side. Yeah, yeah. We should have them all arm wrestle each other. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Have you seen how fat Steven Seagal has gotten? It yeah, move. that's true. Stallone yeah. still looks awesome. That's steroids. Like wearing like a like one of those uh, uh, overcoats. Well, you, you know how Steven Seagal started, don't you? You know how he got into the movies. He was a bodyguard for somebody. No, he was a he was a masseuse or something oh. for like Robert Evans, I think it was. And they said, "Oh, well, let's give you a movie." And they put him in a movie, and Steven Seagal became quote, you know, they use this term "star" very loosely, uh, a movie star. And I like Steven Seagal uh, it, movies. It, it, what do you mean they sucked? Uh, Name uh, one. Uh, Name one. Um, okay, I just watched one fifteen, name, uh, 15 name minutes one. before your show. Name uh, one. Uh, yeah, that's how uh, how much assumption it, or uh, that's how much it stuck yeah. in your mind. Yeah, well, excellent movie. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, yeah. uh, some Russian yeah. gal uh, had a tape of somebody killing her sister, and uh, uh, Steven Seagal kills all the bad guys. Well, that's pretty yeah. much the plot of any Steven Seagal film. <laughs> I even liked his TV show when he he was a reserve police officer and he would uh, ride around uh, in a in a marked unit. And that was uh, pretty much the bottom of his career. That's why he went to Russia. And that thing, yeah, you know, you know, that's kind of like the guys that would get like arrested. Somebody used oh, to Steven Seagal. Can I get a? Can I get your autograph? <laughs> I can't remember who it was. Bobby Slate and somebody like that had a bit about, you know, when you go to uh, McDonald's. And they either turn you down for a job or fire you. Where do you go after that? Yeah, you know, that's pretty much about as, 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 as low on the scale as you can get. Well, that ha that's exactly what happened to Steven Seagal. He wound up working at a McDonald's. Nah. And McDonald's he, didn't want him anymore. He, had, he has plenty of money. But, oh, um, really? Yeah. How do you know he has plenty of money? He's got, uh, I've seen uh, some TV shows about him and his house and his guns and all this stuff. Says he has stuff. 16 million. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess he won't have to worry about his next meal. But uh, talking about Uber, Ray, you just yeah. mentioned that. Uh, I guess in hey, New York. How about the space Blasio. Uber? How about Uber in space? I like that idea. Mm -hmm. Uber in space. Uh, yeah, I think we need space guns. Yeah, yeah. Know. yeah. Right. <laughs> they have Amish Uber. Uber, Uber in Amish country. They uh, have carts. Yeah, they have horses. a guy with a cart who's an Uber driver. Yeah. yeah. But your your uh, Lurch, your mayor, uh, De Blasio. He's seven feet tall. You know, um, he wants to eliminate or re greatly reduce the Uber uh, cabs. They, no, and they just lift. made the law today to do it. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah. They made the law to do it. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. Um, and 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 also uh, guarantee a minimum uh, wage in, of income. fifteen dollars an hour. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you drive an Uber. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that that makes them employees and not subcontractors at that point, and they're going to have to start withholding taxes and doing all those other things. And provide insurance. Yeah, but it, well, it, it, they, this applies to Uber and it applies to Lyft. I think is the other. Yeah. Company. And uh, there's uh, uh, some. Well, you know, you company. know what happened in New York. We have a thing called the yellow cabs. Now, in a lot of other towns, you have cabs and you know yeah, medallion cabs. But here, you have medallion cabs, and that means that each of these people paid. I don't know what the price is now, but at one point, it was as it was high as a grand. million, as high oh, as really? a million wow. for a medallion. Yeah. yeah, and you get this medallion, and it's on the on your uh, uh, stamped onto your welded onto the yeah, hood on of the your hood. car and that gives you the right to drive a cab in new york and that, uh, now uh, you know we could argue that was not the best idea in the world because it became a, a very closed system they then opened it up to the green cars they had a lot of black cars going around and they were what were called gypsy cabs and what they did right. is they brought them into a legal framework mm -hmm. by becoming green cabs and but they can't go below 110th street 
uh, on I think the the east side Don't, and on the west side they, they can't do go, they need to be uh, go below called 46. for service no or no, uh, no they you, can't pick people I hail, up on the I hail them right on the street here in Harlem oh, okay. yeah uh, and uh, thank God they exist you know because there was a time when I first got here if a yellow cab came through Harlem it came through Harlem it just zipped through Never Harlem stopped. it didn't right. stop you could throw yourself in front of the uh, in front of them they run over you. Uh, so the the black cars, the gypsy cars, were what you what I got used to using. So when the green cars came in, you know these are kind of private guys, and so that's a second tier here in in New York. Well, here comes Uber and here comes Lyft, and here are these guys with you know I don't know if the medallion is a million anymore, but let's say they're a couple of hundred thousand dollars each, and they're going uh, south. You know, they're losing money because of, of Uber. And what's yeah. Uber offering? Uber's offering an unpleasant experience. You well, uh, from what people tell me, I've never taken an Uber, yeah. but from what people tell me is that the cars are clean, they're prompt, they pick you up. Yeah. Uh, there may be some issues over uh, different pricing. Well, different and, and, things like, and things like rape. You know, little stuff like that. Well, my car is always perfectly clean, and uh, I have almost a 5.0 rating, so there, uh -huh. on Uber and Lyft. Do you do Uber? Yeah, I do Uber and Lyft, and sometimes I do it a lot of hours if I need the money. Yeah. Wow. Is, is there money enough to be made? Uh, if you, well, you, you got to do it during the right times of the day, like the morning and the weekdays is the best time, and then also... If you do work full time in the Bay Area, you should pick one company and then you start getting bonuses like at the end of the week for doing so many rides. And then it's, you know, it's you can survive doesn't, on it. Doesn't one of them have like a two thousand or twenty five hundred dollar bonus right now? Uh, yeah. So the guys who make the most most money are those who treat it like network marketing and they set up websites and give like lessons on how to drive and be efficient. And then they they give out their their code. And then when that somebody signs up and gives so many so many rides, they get money. The other person gets money. And a lot of there are people who make a lot of money just doing that. And they hardly Isn't ever that drive. Called multi-level marketing. Yeah. A, a pyramid scheme. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they hardly ever drive. And that's all they do. Yeah. Not a lot of people, but those those guys exist. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, uh, yeah. So they did away with, uh, or they're limiting. They're not doing away yeah. with uh, Lyft and, and and Uber, but they're limiting the amount of Ubers that can be on the and Lyfts that can yeah. be on the street at one time. The I, number of new people that can sign up, I think, is what I heard today on the news. Yeah, in San Francisco, I hear the Uber situation is so bad that it's clogging the streets. Uh, it's not as okay. So I I drive and it's a little exaggerated and also people the uber drivers and lyft drivers have gotten much better because you can get a 350 fifty dollar ticket for double parking so i have not seen it as a problem anymore honestly i just i don't see people doing that much because you can't risk getting a 350 fifty dollar ticket so you just pull up yeah, but I i've told if you if you, you tell you yeah. call the people and you say i'm 100 feet ahead of you or you got to walk up a little bit now, do you drive in the city or just in Palo Alto in that area? Well, I, I wherever I end up. I mean, um, often if you start here, you often end up in the city. I see. Um, but if I have to go to San Francisco, which I often do for work, you know, for acting or mm -hmm. auditions or whatever, I'll drive people coming home, and it'll, you know, take yeah. me an extra half an hour, and I'll make anywhere between twenty and eighty bucks. Plus, you get in the carpool lane. And I get in the carpool lane, and I cover like more than my gas, right. and I've hardly worked. So um, it kind of works out well for me, because mm. you can do a directional thing with it. I used to stop and pick people up at the BART station just to get into the uh, carpool lane when I was yeah. going into the city. They <laughs> still know? do that. Yeah, it's I, like I, I, it, there's, yeah. there's a hierarchy. of uh, people. They stand in line. There's a certain way they do it. They get in the car. Uh, yeah. and, and ways now, you know, the, the, the map? Yeah. You can do carpools on ways. Wow. And I think a lot of people who go across the bridge do that on ways. Yeah. Yeah. We, don't, we don't have a lot of people, uh, as many people as usual, watching us, but we have more than usual listening to us. Very strange tonight. Uh, maybe you mean of, like listening on... Um, maybe part on of the, the country isn't getting YouTube. I don't know. You know. Uh, but anyway, so... Uh, it's the Russians. Yeah. 
so let's see here. Oscar's a space uh, space force. Stupid idea. Uh, and and you know I'm the first guy to say let's go to space, but for peaceful reasons, you know. And How do you I know that's not peaceful. And, and we I have mean, our I... space force. It's run by Elon Musk. So you know, I mean, we have it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll look and see uh, on uh, let's say YouTube. Uh, see why uh, you know if your signal's going out. I is it or? Yeah, you know? I, I'm getting it here. All right. You know, it says there's 25, 25. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably one of them. Oh, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm one of them. I'm, I'm at least two of them. <laughs> Maybe three of them. I can look at myself. God, there's nobody listening to us tonight. Yes, Jeff. Hmm. I, I heard something interesting about uh, a guy from uh, New York who uh, is a. He's not a senator, but he's a congressman, and he was also investing in a oh, Australian Collins. medical. Collins. Collins. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, that's uh, another one of Trump's friends from, from Buffalo. Right. Yeah, he's he one was of the first the guy, supporters. The first guy who supported Trump. Well, guess what? He found out cheating on the whole system. Well, alleged, alleged, because he's only been charged with it. It's alleged. I, he no. tipped oh. off. It's uh, he At this point, you have to say alleged. Yeah, oh, but you see, he had uh, 1.3 million shares, and he sold within 10 minutes of getting that news. And if he didn't, he would have lost six hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, well, that he would have lost he six hundred. He would have lost that. Yeah. But he had, got but, 44 million. Why is he doing that? And by the way, know. by the way, Green. Green. Read. But, but the he point, also the, tipped his son off. I heard. And, the point and his, is, and it's, his it's called too. insider trading. You, yeah. In spite of the fact that you're going to lose a gajillion amount of money, you're not supposed to sell it. Now, if he'd sold it off the day before because he smelled something bad or whatever, but he didn't. You know, and uh, we're going to have to see in a court of law what happens here. But it's yet another one of those uh, people that supposedly drained the swamp. Uh, <laughs> his, he's going. He's going down. Martha right. Stewart went to jail for that. Yeah. 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 Did she go for uh, for uh, insider trading? Yeah, she had. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what it was. She went for lying to the FBI. Well, that's, oh, they, okay. they all go for that. Oh, I yeah. thought it was insider trading. So did this trading. guy. They lied. Yeah, too. this guy did the same thing. Yeah. That's one thing you should never do. You know, it, let's say they try to catch you for something, and you want to sneak out of it. Do not lie to the FBI. Just That's why Trump is so worried about talking to Mueller and why his people are afraid of talking to Mueller. No. Because, wait a minute, hold on a second. He is a serial liar. The yeah. guy doesn't know. He, he lies so much, he doesn't know the truth from a lie. Okay? Right. It, and they're afraid that all he's going to do is make one fucking mistake, which is very, very possible, and the jig's up. up. charges. Yeah. yeah. Well, you see, the thing is, is... Even if what you say uh, is not a lie, but it differs from the next time they ask it, then they consider it well, a lie. Here, here, here's the interesting part. Phil. Oh, so and she I've got said, charged with I've, both. I've said this before. Yeah. You, the trouble with a guy like Trump who lies continually is... He's he, got a big mouth. Wait a minute. He does, he, you, when you're lying, it's very hard to be consistent. Mm -hmm. Because you don't remember every way in which you told that lie. When you're telling the truth, there's no problem with being consistent because you know the truth is the truth and you're reciting the yeah. truth. So but lies are a very hard thing to keep up on a constant basis. That's why, for instance, the, all the stories about what went on in Trump Tower with the Russians and so on keeps changing and keeps changing and keeps changing. You know, even when somebody's telling the truth, one person sees something one way, another person sees something another way. They've done a lot of things where uh, they set up a scenario and then they interview the people afterwards. It's for the police department. Yeah. And uh, in the way that different people see uh, the, the actions that led up to it and all of those things are sometimes are completely different. Uh, and it's not that they're lying. Well, I, it's, well, I heard a story the other day that they did a study, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it, it was something like a 9-11, some kind of tragedy, okay? Yeah. 
And then they went around interviewing people about that tragedy. And then they went back 10 years later and interviewed them once again about the tragedy. And their whole recall was different. Right. Uh, right. You know. But that's not the problem with Trump. The fact is Trump has lies so much he can't keep up with what he was saying the last time he lied and making it consistent with the lie he's telling now. Lies are, See, very I, hard, I lies are very hard to maintain. The truth is very easy to maintain. Hello, Jack Bishop. Hello there. Hello there. I heard you talking about a... A uh, friend of the president's who is uh, currently in trouble. There was a story, and it may be the same guy. I'm not sure about this because I just caught a. This is what you know, Chris Collins is his name. Uh, it's Collins. Collins. I don't know the first name. Yeah. I don't think it's him. Yet. But uh, this guy is uh, in the administration, and was also involved in some shady financial dealings. But the thing that struck me, and this guy was at one time he claimed he was worth. Two billion dollars turned out he's only worth about seven hundred million. But hey, who's counting? Yeah. Uh, one of the things that they found out when they were investigating him, Wilbur it, something, Wilbur Ross? No. Yeah, yeah. Wilbur, Wilbur Ross. Ross. He's the um, he's on the cabinet. Yeah. Well, That's anyway, him. one of the things they found out about him while he was being investigated. Uh, when he was involved in uh, the investment business, he would leave the floor that his offices were on and go down to the coffee shop and steal sugar substitutes so he wouldn't have to buy them. I do that at Starbucks. <laughs> is, is, is that a Republican Party uh, deal there? Is that a... Is that the latest Republican Party uh, criminal activity? No, no. But once I found out that uh, sugar substitute uh, is, is is bad for your diabetes, I stopped doing it and and drink the coffee with just cream. Yeah. Uh, let me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, all I'm saying is is that that um, lying is um, is very difficult to maintain. I mean, you, you know, we've all told lies in our time. And then if somebody asks you about that a couple of days later, you don't remember exactly the way you told the lie the first time. But the truth is easy to remember. You know, you can remember the, something happened and then this happened and then that happened. So all I'm saying is when you lie, well, it's much harder. And so that's what they're worried about with Mueller. I mean, all he's yeah. got to do is fuck up on one thing. And, uh, I mean, you know, that's what they, I think they tried to get um, Clinton on. Yeah. You know, in the Richmond Police Department, the one thing that, that would definitely get you fired is if you lied. So uh, I, I took a, a thing where I always told the truth because it didn't matter what you did. It, it, as long as you didn't lie about it, they wouldn't fire you. And uh, for instance, there was this one cop that arrested a homeless guy and the guy had rotting food. And so instead of taking the rotting food and putting it in the trunk and then booking it into evidence, he threw it away. Yeah. The guy complained out on him, and when he did, they asked the cop, did you throw away the guy's food? He said no. Well, it seems as though there was some videotape, and they showed him throwing away the food, and he got fired. All he had to say was, yeah, I threw it away. It was rotting. Yeah. <laughs> you know? what, so what, what were you showing us there, Ray? Oh, it's a, an elephant. Yeah. I got trunk uh, trunk up. No, where, no where, trunk, where, not up. Uh, where, trunk up. No, and a little Buddha. Eh? Uh huh. Are they and a mouse? Yeah. Huh? Where Where'd you get those? Uh, he stole them. Someone gave me this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember, and I got this. Sub I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, it's a very yeah. nice. It's a very nice elephant. It is. I, I, I got it somewhere in my travels that I don't remember where. And somebody else gave me this other Buddha. I don't know why people give me Buddhas. I have no idea. What have you got there? Everybody's showing stuff. It's like a 64 Chevrolet or something. 67, uh, Nova. 67 Chevy Nova hardtop. Yeah. Ah, really? Oh, cool. Yeah, I never gave a shit about cars. I know. I and, saw and, some of the cars you drove. No, I yeah, really. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you mean you saw some of the cars I drove in the later Did you years? See that Volkswagen he had. I no, I, I, I drove. Square back. I'm just fritzing with you. 
I had a 300Z. Didn't I had, see that, but I had uh, you know an Acura, uh, top of the line Acura, you know. But I just never. I, everybody would say, "Boy, that's a cool car you got, that Datsun Z, man." They, or, or it wasn't called the Datsun, Nissan. but the Nissan Z. And they go, oh, it's a, "Wow, a Nissan Z, that's cool." And they would give me the high sign, and I'm going, "I don't give a shit. It's just all I care about is it gets me from here to there." So why'd you have a cool car? Like a 240Z. To begin with, because I could afford it. Uh -huh. Secondly, I could take the top the down. That was nice. 240Z is too old to lease. 280. 280Z. Well, this is a 300Z. This was a 300Z. Well, yeah, but the, the old Datsun 240Z was 72. Yeah. Awesome. That, what, yeah. what got me is when you had the convertible in Chicago. Well, because I had it in, in, somewhere else. Where did I buy, I did, where did I buy that convertible? It was a Mustang, right? It was Mustang yeah, convertible. Mustang. Yeah. 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 One of the last times I saw you before you we both disappeared. Let me t This is my alarm reminding me you got to go do a show. There. Turn that off. Uh, uh I always wondered why anybody in a climate as cold as Chicago or New York would mm -hmm. have a convertible, but then I started buying convertibles again in Texas. And my wife says, why does anybody have a convertible in a place that's as hot as Texas? I, well, I'm because remember, they're I'm, cheaper. I'm trying to remember where <laughs> I bought that convertible, though. I don't think I, I may have. I would have had to have either bought it in Houston or, or Minneapolis. I, you didn't have it in Houston. You had a Mustang yeah. in Houston that you had to have air conditioning put in because... You were, we were all sweating. Well, in those like days, big. in those days, you always had air conditioning put in because they didn't come with the cars. Well, Alex, uh, uh, I hate to correct you, uh, but yeah, some cars did come. You know, they started the Cadillacs. Well, well no, they, I don't uh, think. For instance, uh, there wasn't a there, there wasn't a Mustang that you, if you wanted air conditioning, they installed the unit. Uh, you know, under now, the under now, the dash. Now you're right. The first series Mustang did not have integral air. Yeah. But integral air started going into uh, moderately priced cars in 54, 55. I don't think there's a car built today that doesn't have air conditioning in it, right? Oh, no. they There are cars that they sell without air conditioning. Really? Yeah. yeah. Depends on uh, the country. Depends on the area, yeah. L uh, Low-end cars, uh, you can still get without AC. They don't sell worth a damn. You can get them without, uh, without electric windows. Yep. I you remember, know, uh, this is me as a child, okay, and we had like a Hudson, mm -hmm. right, and it would get hot, and we'd be driving down, I, we'd be driving down the highway, sometimes in the southwest, because my father might have had a gig down there or something, and you always had to open up the wind wings, mm -hmm. right, roll down the windows, and then there was this thing in the front of the car you pulled on the thing, and a vent, a vent. opened up on the front, yeah. and that was supposed to cool you down. And all it was I bet was, you no, huh? no seat belts? Oh, forget not. about seat belts. You had an accident. Yeah. You just kind of like uh, washed the blood off the dashboard and continued on no your way. You know? uh, no collapsible nope. steering wheel. And air uh, no safety I not glass. only remember no collapsible steering wheel. I remember a friend of mine who had an Oldsmobile, and it had in the middle of the where the horn would normally go, right in the middle of the steering wheel, this big sharp projectile item. That, it was like plastic. It, no, clear. it was pure metal. That oh. was it, it, where the horn would usually be, so that if you oh. had an accident, you got impaled on this damn thing. <laughs> That's how safe cars were in those days. They didn't give a fucking shit. My dad bought a uh, one-year-old Cadillac, and he bought it in 55, so it had to be a 54. And it had the same thing pointed right at your chest. And for uh, airbags, my mom used to set my little sister on her lap, just in case. <laughs> you know? Well, in 1955, yeah, in 1955 I wanted like a Cadillac. Dagmars, they I, were I, I, in 1955, I wanted a Cadillac, but I couldn't afford it. But a few years ago, uh, I, I, I lived out my dream and bought a 1955 Cadillac. So it Wait. was uh, no problem. Joke. This is a big joke. It's a joke. Okay. Oh. <laughs> if you have to say they're a joke, then they're probably not. You know. 
Well, I wouldn't mind having that caddy that my dad had again. Yeah. Uh, after he died, uh, when I was a teenager, I'm walking down Van Ness Avenue in San Francisco where the used car lots used to be, and there was his old car on the lot. And the reason I recognized it, it had a scratch mm-hmm. on the fender and another scratch on the opposite side on the door. And I said, my God, that's my old man Cadillac. I haven't seen that car in four years. You remember? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, I'll they, tell you something. Uh, Van Ness, you had Ellis Brooks. Oh, and, yeah. Okay. Uh, that was car. Yeah. That was car uh, automotive row. Yeah. 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 That was. Uh, uh, you had Don Lee uh, Cadillac. Uh, was it that which what it was? W- which, and it was up, George something and, Cadillac? And, uh, no. And yeah, upstairs, George. upstairs was Don Lee's Mutual Network. That's uh, right. Uh, That's which right. was the West Coast Mutual Network. Yeah. And and I'm sure you remember Gil Heil, who sold cars for Ellis Brooks Chevrolet yeah. uh, on TV and on radio. But the point yeah. is that when I was a kid, when I was about 1955, when I was 15, the car that you wanted was uh, the Thunderbird. There was just something yeah. about the Thunderbird that caught everybody's attention. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this. There's, the Corvette Stingray is probably one of the most coveted cars in America. And it was the, the Corvette was the competition to the Thunderbird. But those original two-seater Thunderbirds, man, what a sweet little car. I even like the new, the, they don't make them anymore. Oh, but by the way, a I hate cars. Yeah. A Thunderbird that they brought out in the 90s. Sam Van Zant has one. Uh, it's a convertible, and you can uh-huh. bolt on the yeah, hard that, top. That, it's got yeah, the they, 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 that was the, the thing that was so great about the original Thunderbirds was their size. And all of a well, sudden, in about 1957, oh, 58, yeah, they grew. They decided was they, the year they went to the four passenger Thunderbird. Yeah, but the 92 is a two passenger. Right. Well, and, let me uh, let me finish what I'm saying. It's actually a good looking car, and it's I'm inexpensive saying. to buy right now. Well, listen to what I'm trying to say. So 1950, what year did you say that they? 55 to 57 was four, the, uh, 50, the, yeah, the, 55 the four, to 57. The four, the four, the four seater. And oh, the two-seater. Uh, t- uh, no, there was the two was the first year of the, oh, the four-seater. Uh, four-seater. Yeah. When they brought out the four-seater, that was the end of the Thunderbird. That just oh, wasn't no. the Thunderbird. Oh, no. That, that, it was gorgeous. Uh, the That 58, 59, and 60 for a year from Brooklyn. was gorgeous. For, for somebody from like Brooklyn, like that was gorgeous. That now, was 61 not, looked like a spaceship. That, so did 62. No, but who cares about now, why they look like spaceships? The fact was that little Thunderbird with two seats in it, man, was the coolest most fun to ride in car you've ever been in in your life i saw one the other day yeah yeah right i saw one the other day alex and it just caught my eye from far away yeah beautiful car yeah they're, they're pricing themselves out of the market now though. oh yeah you know yeah. it's 35 35 thousand dollar minimum price Plus, yeah. one of, jeff, yeah, jeff what, what for an old one or for a new one old one uh, old the one. old one 556 57 yeah yes jeff uh turn on your mic you're muted. jeff yeah. We always still, have yeah, to. Uh, I would say that the 55, 56, 57 were very nice and all of that. But you guys keep calling them two seaters. They were really three seaters. That's right. Would it have a rumble seat? I don't no. think. I think. No. no, I think you're wrong. It's just I think one you're wrong because big I. Wide no, seat. no, I think you're wrong, and I'll tell you why. Oh, oh, no! What he's saying was it <clears> no. Had a I bench know, seat. I know the bench seat, but the the Thunderbird didn't have bench seats. It had bucket seats. So, Not, no, the Corvette had bucket seats. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah. <clears throat> Not till '58 did the Thunderbird have uh, bucket seats. The uh, the Little Bird, as they're called, the '55, '56, '57. Had a bench seat, and yeah, you could right. squeeze three. But they had to be real good friends, and none of them had to be as big as uh, Phil Meyer or myself. Now, I, were they a manual shift? Because nope. the Corvette, no, I think, automatic. was automatic, and nobody wanted it. The Corvette uh, had no had uh, two-speed power glide right. and a six-cylinder shit. engine. The yeah. T-Bird was either a 312. Well, uh, no, it wasn't 312 initially. It was originally the two, 292, the 292 yeah. version uh, of uh, what was called Y-Block Ford engine. Yeah. And um, 
Okay, uh, we get a manual uh, shift. Okay, well, we've, been, we've, been joined, we've been joined by Kevin. Kevin, you into cars? That's why I called in, because your YouTube <laughs> failed. What? Oh, really? YouTube went off the air. Oh, you no, know, I'm that, still that's, getting it on that, YouTube. That's strange, because I'm getting it here. Oh, you know? okay, well, maybe mine went off. No, it could, be in, it could be in I certain areas it went out, because I noticed earlier tonight that it went down to a very low number. That there may yeah, have been maybe. some, there may have been, yeah. you know, a lot of times there are outages in various parts of the country, but not mm -hmm. all over the country. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know. But no, I, I have a 53 Dodge pickup, so. Oh, that's a, actually two of them. Nice. I want to disagree with Mr. Bennett. What? He said that the 60, now my mom had both a, six, uh, a 60 T Bird and then when the 60. So did my dad, a red one. Uh, hers, her, hers was that terrible, shocking pink. Uh, and then uh, in 61, she loved the 61 so much that she traded in her 18-month-old T-Bird for a new 61. And I thought that was the most gorgeous car. Yeah, it looked like a rocket ship. And, yep. and the bucket but, seats and the console, everything about it looked like the Batmobile. By the way, look Except at what, what, is that, what is that, My Ray? My dad had a 59 Chevy, a Batmobile, Ray, Ray. black one with the red interior. Nice. That had the big fins. Yeah, Ray, yeah. Ray, what is what is that you're, you're showing us? Or maybe uh, he's left oh, the room. Uh, I think he went to the bathroom. Oh, uh, that's <laughs> that's probably that some sort of tiki. And, and that's probably what came thing. out. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I just you know, I mean, but I've never been a big car guy. I mean, I do remember we. I used to love once a year, like I think it was in maybe September. Water Show? No, September. All the uh, dealers would debut their new cars on one particular night, and and it was a big deal to get get out of the house and go down to the car dealerships to see the new models. Yep. Yeah. Um, you were over in Marin County, kid. That that, that was you know. We still had horses. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't think we had cars? Uh, where was American? You didn't even have a bridge until nineteen. Where was American Graffiti filmed? You were. Uh, you uh, Modesto. Yep. No. Yeah. no. San Rafael. San Rafael and Petaluma because they kicked them yeah. out of San Rafael after the second night of shooting. But wasn't it supposed to be about Modesto? Yeah. It was supposed yeah. to be about Modesto. And yeah. and, and the, the quote was, where were you in 62, was it? And yeah, you know where, you know where, I, you know where yeah. I was You know where yeah. I was in 62? Modesto. I, I was in Modesto. <laughs> For all I know, the Wolfman Jack character was based on me. You know, so. yeah. Well, over there in Marin County, you know that was never a, a, a hotbed of car culture. You had to, you had to come to the city. It to is eat. if you want a Land Rover. Oh, we no, it was very much a car culture. I mean, come oh, on, there, you're living, you're living in from, Marin County, which is what we call the country, and yeah. you don't think there were a lot of cars there? You're out of your mind because you, you didn't have to worry about traffic. Well, I only knew one kid from Marin County other than you. Yeah. And he was the only kid uh, from Marin that I ever met that was into cars because his dad owned a garage in San Francisco. Yeah, well, I knew a lot of kids who were building hot rods and doing things like that. Hot rods, listen to me. That's <laughs> aging me. But, but if south want, of San Francisco. If, south yeah. of San Francisco, down where I lived in Burlingame, San Mateo, down on the El Camino. Was the well, your father the owned elk. a gas station. Cruising you know. the Elk. Yeah, but you, Kevin, your father owned what a gas station. Yeah, uh, and you, yeah. if you went there on any Friday night, there was at least five or ten cars in there getting fixed. Yeah. After Dad shut the station down, Kevin had the keys, and we all went in. Oh, there all the kids. The yeah, the I kids think I the... think the reason I never <laughs> yep. had a great love of cars was my I made a lot of beer that time. My father <laughs> always uh, always got like not really expensive cars. You get like Chevys and Fords and things like that, you know. Yep. Uh, and his attitude was the one I just said was, all I care about is if it gets me from here to there. I don't care what it looks like or what it feels like, you know. And so I came up, I grew yep. up with that attitude. Uh, it, it, well, boy. A little feedback. Uh, uh, I, I grew up with that, that, what is all that noise? It's got to be Steve. Steve. Yeah. It's a truck or something. Yeah. Um, 
But my father uh, kind of, you know, I kind of grew up with that attitude from my father. You, you remember the kind of loser cars that kids' fathers had, like the Willys and, uh, you, know, some, some, you know, some of those cars. Well, well the, that, worst, the, worst, were, the worst the worst, car your father could. Hey, 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 hey right. Steve, oh, okay. Steve, Steve, mute, mute yourself, Steve. Mute yourself or I'm going to hang up on you. Oh, okay. No, I, I just happened. I'm coming up by a highway. I'll yeah, mute yeah, it. yeah, well, you don't ever seem to care. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, uh, what was I going to oh, say? We, the, the cars that weren't cool. Oh, the, I'd say probably the most un... There were two uncool cars. All right. Not the Studebaker. The Nash. Right? Those were cool. Now they mm-hmm. are. They were cool, but not at they the are. time. Yeah, yeah. And I'd say the Studebaker was not really cool. Depended no. on the Studebaker. Yeah, Jeff and I have talked about that. If yeah, well, it was a Studebaker Hawk. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or an Avanti. Or an Avanti, right. which came later. Or even perhaps more cool, but not as recognized as being The president? Cool. Slow down. The 1953 to 55... Studebaker coupes, the Lowry coupes that were. Oh yeah, those were hawks. Well, all I know is there was one Studebaker that looked like when it was sitting there, like you didn't know which was the front and which was the back. Forty nine fifty. Yeah. You didn't know whether it was coming or going. Yep. Yeah. And the and the the windshield in the rear window was uh, sort of uh, the rear window was wrapped around in such a way that it looked like it was the front of the car. Okay, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna mention a car that. Uh, two cars that I don't know if you, anybody can remember them. Uh, the Henry J. Remember? I had one. I had a, 40, a 49 or a 50. Uh, couldn't, couldn't have been that early. Uh, Kaiser didn't start making the Henry J. I had, till it was 50, a four-cylinder. It was my first car. My dad bought it for a hundred dollars for me. Had the uh, it had the Willys Jeep engine in them in the four cylinders. And there was yeah. another car with. Uh, I seem to remember it as having one headlight called the Davis. Uh, the uh, the Kaiser. Uh, 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 no, no, that's the Tucker. The no, Tucker you're thinking about had. the Tucker, but it had two yeah. plus one in the middle in as the middle well. In the middle moved, yeah. yeah. The now, moved, there but, was a Davis, but they never really got into production. Yeah. They built about 50, maybe it's, to, up to as many 70 cars. Well, that's about the same, as, that's the same as the Tucker. The Tucker, they make more than 100 mm-hmm. of them. Did oh, the Cunningham? Left. Did the Cunningham have a center headlight? Uh, Cunningham, Cunningham. I know it had those doors, like the Kaiser. No, I'll tell you. I'll tell you so. what. The subject yeah. is going to be tomorrow night: cigarettes that no longer exist. <laughs> the Timots, <laughs> the Cavaliers. I'm uh, too young uh, for this conversation. <laughs> so my, my favorite. Hey, try, how about ter- uh, Terratons? Yeah, what? Jeff Scott. That yeah. very few people are going to be able to get it. It's a Kaiser Davis. Yeah. Yes, not yeah. the Darren. Darren. Kaiser, Kaiser Darren. 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 Yeah, I know Darren. Kaiser Darren. Yeah. Okay. My favorite. Oh, my, my, my favorite that nobody will get was the dual Gia. I, oh, I, I know the dual yeah. Gia. I had a Facel Vega, which was very similar to the dual Ooh. Gia. But, and I had an HK500. Matter of fact, Alex had seen that in my yeah. garage in Sausalito, but probably doesn't the remember. I had a Carmen Gia. Yeah. yeah. Those are, those are gorgeous. They Same. were designed by Pina Faria. Yeah. Uh, no, they were designed by Ghia, by which Ghia. was a design house in Italy. Oh, that's right. You know. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, 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 the dual Ghia mm-hmm. was a car. They only produced two. 200, I think. No, not even that many, really. Uh, For... Out of two series, probably only about 150, 160. But they were the car of choice for Hollywood. Oh my God! I got to go do a radio. I mean, an internet show. Yeah. This has been so much fun. You're not in radio <laughs> anymore. <laughs> That's what my wife. This, this is, this is not head radio head any check. longer. The internet. Hey. Did you, did, did you hear what I said? That's what my wife says when I she looks at my GabNet paycheck. You're not in radio anymore. Yeah, You're not right. Well, damn she's thing. absolutely, uh, absolutely right. And I talked to her tonight, and she's a very smart woman. Because at uh, least she Alex can operate a computer. With, 
What? Alex came up with gab coin. You may yeah. be able to get paid in that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, thanks to Jack Bishop for being here. Yeah. Uh, thanks to uh, Jeff for being here. We won't see Jeff for a week now. He's going to be That's right. off uh, to Hey, uh, 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 if you can, uh, please, you know, uh, when Paisan. it's uh, the time difference, uh, you're going to wake up and at 3 in the morning and you're going to think that it's like 8 in the morning. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. called jet lag. I yeah. love that. I like read and stuff for yeah. hours and no one's around. Ray, thank you for being here. Phil, thank you for being here. Thank you, Kevin. We always enjoy having you here. Thank okay. you, Steve, for the noise. Uh, Scott Boddicker yep. isn't even Sorry. sitting down. I don't know if he's going to wave goodbye or anything, <clears throat> but uh, we thank him. His there. wife says, what do you mean you're not moving? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I would say it would be nice if all of you would be waving them a big goodbye and they can wave right back. That's our citizens panel for tonight. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, there they go. And that's it for me. Here I go. Uh, I will be back again. Uh, let's see here. We'll be doing this again tomorrow night. Uh, but uh, next is Jack Bishop. All right. Uh, and, oh, uh, yeah, go goodbye, uh, uh, Scott. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me see. Yeah, can I show Scott? No, I can't. Well, anyway, Scott is gone. They're all gone. They're all going away. Okay. And that's our citizen panel for tonight. And uh, well, Jack Bishop is next. You know, he's next with a nice little program called The Intersection. And then at 1 o'clock this morning, it's Connections. Tomorrow night, Damian Chaplin with The Exchange at 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time. And tomorrow night at 10. I'll be back here, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody.